more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I will never be lonely, for you are near. You become my delicious feast. Even when my enemies dare to fight, you anoint me with your fragrance of the Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of, you, until my heart overflows. So why would I fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence and be forever with you. Lord is my best friend, my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I will never be lonely, for you are near. You become my delicious feast. Even when my enemies dare to fight, you anoint me with your fragrance of the Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of, you, until my heart overflows. So why would I fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence and be forever with you. Lord is my best friend, my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I will never be lonely, for you are near. You become my delicious feast. Even when my enemies dare to fight, you anoint me with your fragrance of the Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of, you, until my heart overflows. So why would I fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence and be forever with you. Lord is my best friend, my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your 
authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I will never be lonely for you are near. You become my delicious feast. Even when my enemies dare to fight, you anoint me with your fragrance of the Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of, you, until my heart overflows. So why would I fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence and be forever with you. Lord is my best friend, my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Lord, even when you're Good morning, everybody. I want to welcome you to Victory Christian Fellowship. And we're just gathered in God's house to experience God's presence and enjoy God's goodness. Father, we give you all the praise and glory this morning. We are so excited to be together, to be in your house. Lord, there's no place like your presence. We just acknowledge you, Lord. We want to enjoy the beauty and the magnificence of your glory. And we give you all the praise, and we welcome your presence here in Jesus' name. Amen. Come, let's worship the Lord together.
Jesus. I don't know if you realize it, but every breakthrough, every single breakthrough, the foundation is the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to think about this as we sing. It is the name of Jesus that holds our answers because the name of Jesus is greater than any other name. Hallelujah. We worship you in this place. want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind because I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus oh let's sing to him I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break can you see it shaking clearing there is hope and there is freedom
worship the King of Kings. Oh, the splendor of the King. Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. Worship in this 
morning, the name of Jesus. Let's bring it back to the name of Jesus. Let's bring it back to the greatest name that there is. Sometimes things get too complicated. What we need is the name of Jesus. That's where you put your faith. You put your faith in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus is the word. He's the living word. And he walked among us. Oh, he walked on this earth. We worship you this morning. Father, we worship you. Holy Spirit, we welcome your presence in this place. Change the atmosphere of our lives. Change the atmosphere. Take us to different levels than where we are now. Come on, you can ask for this in your own home. Oh, take us to different levels in our homes, Lord. Let the atmosphere of the name of Jesus enter in. Let the atmosphere of the name of Jesus enter in. Means we have the greatest name among us. Oh, we see him. We can hear him clearly. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, Lord, we enter into your holy presence. We join with the angels and we cry, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Oh, we love you, Lord. We bless your holy and wonderful name. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Oh, we just enjoy you, Lord. Yeah, let's sing that some more. Sing that some more. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. His name is the highest name. His name is the sweetest name. His name is the most powerful and exalted name in all of time, in all of creation. The name of Jesus stands alone. Salvation is only found in that name. Deliverance comes through his name strength is imparted through his name hallelujah oh we exalt that name your name Lord Jesus blessed be your name forevermore hallelujah glory glory to your name praise your name Your name may 
makes demons tremble. Your name opens up graves. Your name causes sickness to flee. Your name stops the enemy. Your name makes a way where there was no way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, God put Jesus' name in lights. Amen. Hallelujah. He's the light of the world. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for your name, Jesus. And Lord, we thank you that you speak to us. Hear ye, hear ye, my people, for I dwell in you, and I shall speak to you in a still, small voice with my personal touch. I will emblazon you with my will. I will imprint my commands on your heart. Listen to my voice, for it will always help you make the right choice. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Well, you may be seated. Thank you, Signature Worship Team. Oh, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. We're glad that you're here this morning. And we're going to make our confession of faith. Next week we'll have a new emphasis for our confession. Hallelujah. Isn't it awesome to be able to speak the word Amen. and then to watch it work? Because the word will never fail us. Amen. All right? I invite all of us to uh, make our confession together. Let's make our confession. We worship an awesome God. The great and amazing God is among us. Our God reigns supreme. He is the God of gods and Lord of lords. God is great, mighty, and awesome. Our God stands alone. He is the one and only rock of our salvation, our chief cornerstone and firm foundation. We are safe and secure in him. Our God is the Lord of kings and the revealer of secrets. He shows us things that are hidden. God is our Father, Jesus is our Lord, and His Holy Spirit is our partner, working in us, and in Him we live, move, and have our being. We are redeemed by God who does great and awesome things. God strengthens and empowers us, and we bless His holy name. All things are under His feet, and Jesus is the head of all things to the church. God, our Savior, alone is wise. To him be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, now and forever. Amen. At Victory, our vision is to reach out beyond our walls with the message of salvation, hope, and inheritance. To proclaim the uncompromising word of God. To build a strong body of believers and to encourage relationships in a loving atmosphere. We activate God's word to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. At Victory Christian Fellowship, we are inheriting God's promises and experiencing their benefits. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good, isn't he? Amen.
Just want to let you know of uh, some announcements. We had a great uh, egg hunt yesterday. It was wonderful. Had a lot of, uh, had a great turnout, and uh, kids had fun, and it, it goes quick. Amen. Thanks for everybody who helped and for uh, Hershey Company who donated candy. We appreciate that very much. And um, if you ordered a, a fundraiser meal, they're available today. And uh, they do have some uh, extra meals. And you can see uh, Kelsey and Sean. Uh, I don't know where they, they're. In, yeah, Sean's at the camera and Kelsey's in the back there. There you go. Couldn't see you behind the cameras. And then also uh, April 16th, 17th, and 18th, uh, we're going to have our Woven uh, Women's Conference with Robin D. Bullock, and the uh, place is going to be packed out, and he's also going to be our speaker on Sunday, and uh, we're going to see all of our chairs filled, amen? It's going to be a glorious thing, um, and uh, so the conference is uh, sold out. But uh, we're going to have a good time that weekend. Hallelujah. God is doing something here. Amen. And I want to just uh, point out something. I want to read from Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6 and uh, verse 17. You know, the Lord appeared to Gideon because Israel was being oppressed by the Midianites because they had turned away from God and an enemy invaded them. And the Midianites would steal all the harvest. And uh, God was about to deliver Israel. And you know, whenever God wants to do something, he will connect with a person. God cooperates with people. And um, so him and Gideon were having a conversation. And in the midst of the conversation, Gideon said this in verse 17. Gideon replied to him, If I have found any favor in your sight, then show me a sign that it is you who speaks with me. Please do not depart from here until I come back to you and bring my offering. Everybody say, bring my offering. And place it before you. And he said, I will wait till you return. So the Lord's waiting there while Gideon is preparing his offering, getting it ready to bring to him. So what does he give? He went and prepared a young goat, unleavened bread from an ephah of flour. He put the, the meat in the basket. He put the broth in the pot. And uh, he brought the fruit unto him unto the oak tree or the terebinth tree. And he presented it. Why don't you notice he prepared it, then he presented it. Right? Who's he giving it to? He's giving it directly to the Lord. Then the angel of God said to him, Take the meat and unleavened bread and lay them on this rock and pour out the broth over them. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put, the end, put out the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the unleavened bread, and fire flared up from the rock, and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread, then the angel of the Lord vanished from his sight. Did God receive his offering? Yep, Gideon gave his offering, and the Lord received his offering. When you give your offering today, you're giving it unto the Lord. Amen? And it takes care of his work, and he's going to receive it. And when he receives it, he multiplies it. And he gives it back to you more than you got, amen? Or more than you gave, I should say. Father, I thank you. I call every giver and their gift blessed by you, empowered by you, provided by you. And Lord, I thank you that you pour out increase, abundance, and plenty on each and every one. In Jesus' name, amen. You can give anytime during the service. Or if you're watching online, you can uh, give uh, through a website. Amen. And before we dismiss the kids... Wanted to share uh, two things with you. I want to read you a poem. How many like to take trips? Did you know that you can take a trip and not even leave your house? I want to tell you a poem about traveling on your knees. Last night, I took a journey. 
to a land across the seas. I didn't go by boat or plane. I trusted on my knees. I saw so many people there in the deepest depths of sin. And Jesus told me I should go that there were souls to win. But I said, Jesus, I can't go and, the, and work with such as these. He answered quickly, yes, you can, by traveling on your knees. He said, you, you pray, I'll meet the need. You call, and I will hear. Be concerned about lost souls of those both far and near. And so I tried it, knelt in prayer. Gave up some hours of ease. I felt the Lord right by my side while traveling on my knees. As I prayed on and saw souls saved and twisted bodies healed and saw God's workers strength renewed while laboring in the field, I said, yes, Lord, I have a job. My desire, thy will to please. I can go and heed your call by traveling on my knees. And then one other thing. One morning, I went into my daughter's room to wake her up and get her ready for school. I laid my head on her chest and gave her a hug. She sighed and her breath rolled down my face. Whew, you've got some serious morning breath. I said, she laughed as we proceeded with the morning routine. As we headed out the door to leave, a gust of wind came up and almost blew us off the porch. In the innocence of a second grade voice, my daughter said, wow, mom, God's got great morning breath. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right, we have kids life. Kids living in faith every day, and we got faith-filled teachers who are going to teach. Amen? All right, let's have our teachers stand and get ready. And our kids, kids, have a great and wonderful class. Be blessed. Learn about Jesus. Have fun. Amen and amen. This was the day in the life of Jesus where we call it the triumphal entry, where he rode on a, a brand new colt, rode into the city, and they shouted messianic praises to him. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He was demonstrating to them that he was the Messiah because the Pharisees got unnerved by the praise that he was receiving. So this morning, I'm not going to talk to you about that. <laughs> but we are on a pathway to the resurrection. And this morning, I want to answer the question, why did Jesus have to die? You know, sometimes we need to understand the price that he paid to rescue you and I from sin. So I'm going to answer this question today, why did Jesus have to die? Because next week, then we're going to have a celebration of the greatest event as of yet for the body of Christ, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen? But you know, before you get to the resurrection, you've got to go through some things, right? So why did Jesus have to die? I want you to go to the Gospel of John, chapter 12. John, chapter 12, and starting with verse 23. John 12, 23. Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Notice, he was focusing more on being glorified than dying. 
He said, verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it die, it brings forth much fruit. He that loves his life shall lose it. But he that hates his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Amen? So Christianity is all about redemption. And it's through the substitutionary death of the Son of God himself. He took our place. He took our pain and he took our punishment. And the only basis on which a holy God could forgive sin was by his Son bearing the penalty of the sin of the world. He can't just forgive sin merely on the basis of repentance, but forgiveness comes when the penalty has been paid in full, and that's what Jesus' death is all about. He paid the price for you and I to enjoy all the benefits and accolades that come with being redeemed. Amen? Be, having value added to us, having been bought with a price, there was a price to pay. See, God needed to cancel sin. And he needed to treat it as if it were not. To maintain and vindicate his righteousness. God solved the sin problem when he gave his only begotten son to die for us. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 85.10, it says, Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed. You know where mercy met truth? It was on a cross. Jesus was, he is the truth. And that was the greatest display of mercy. If anyone asks you, how much does God love you? You know what his response is? I love you this much. That's how much he loves each and every one of us. You see, sometimes we don't grasp the full magnitude of sin or the incredible weight of God's holiness and the distance between them is so great. All right? So through his death, he repaired our broken relationship with God. It's through Jesus See, good works can't make up for wrongs, all right? And, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if a sin is big or if it's a sin is little, it's still sin. And sin separates you from God. When we commit a sin, we are, it, it separates us, but thank God that he included repentance in his plan. God added a U-turn so that when we miss the mark or get off track, we can turn around and we can recalculate. Amen? See, go with me to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. God said it here in verse 17. He instituted it from the very beginning of what would happen when sin occurs. All right? Genesis 2, 17. It says, 
But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it, for in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely what? Die. Death. God instituted death as the penalty for sin. Now, there are different kinds of death. There is physical death, where you leave your body. There is eternal death. And there, and there is spiritual death, where you're separated from God. And there's eternal death, where you're in hell forever. And God delivered us from all of them. Amen? Go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Take a light speed jump into the New Testament. Ephesians chapter 2, and look at it, verse 3. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2 and verse 3. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past. This was B.C., before Christ. Okay? That in the lust of our flesh... Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, we were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Notice, I want you to notice, before Christ, we had a nature under God's wrath. Why? Because we inherited a sin nature from Adam. When he sinned, it infected all of humanity, and everyone born after Adam was infected with a sin nature. But then Jesus came along, and he paid the price. He owed a debt, or we owed a debt we couldn't pay, but he paid it for us. Amen? And because of what he paid, we now can have the nature of God on the inside of us. He takes out the old nature and puts in his nature. And that, therefore we become new creatures in Christ Jesus. Right? And you know, Jesus told his disciples on several occasions that he was going to die and rose again, but they didn't get it when he told it to them. Right? Because they were just surprised at what happened as everybody else was. And they didn't understand it, even though he said it to them several times. But then after he rose from the dead, they're like, oh yes, we remember when he said this. It clicked finally. Aren't you glad when things click? Amen? So, we can share in his death just as much as we can share in his resurrection. Now here are some reasons why Jesus had to die. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. Just going to give you a few reasons why Jesus had to die. Now, you might think, you might be sitting here today and say, God, wasn't there a better plan? Wasn't there a better way? No, this was the best plan and this was the only way. Everybody say the only way. God had to do it this way. This is how he designed it. What Jesus did was the best way. And what Jesus did was the only way for us to get to the Father. For our relationship that was broken to be repaired and restored. So no, there wasn't any other way. Remember, Jesus asked this question in the garden, Lord, if there's another way. If there would have been another way, God would have showed him another way, right? But there wasn't another way. He had to do what he had to do. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to do what you got to do. Right? You got to do what you got to do sometimes. You may not like it, you may not want to do it, but you got to do it. Isaiah 53, starting with verse 4. Surely... He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Griefs and sorrows are the words for pain and sickness. Notice, he bore your pain and he carried your sickness. If someone's carrying your sickness, what does that leave you with? Healing. Health. Amen? Say, Jesus carried my sickness. 
Oh yeah, he took it to the trash dump and threw it away. He said, you don't need this anymore. I'm going to give you my life. I'm going to give you my health. I'm going to give you my strength. I'm going to give you my vitality. Woo! So why did he have to die? He had to bear our sorrows. He had to bear our griefs and carry our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Verse 5, he was wounded for our transgressions. What's a transgression? It's a violation of law. It's a broken command. You were given a command, you didn't, you didn't carry it out, you didn't do it. All right? Why was he wounded? For our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. What's iniquity? It's evil. It's things that go against God. It's ungodly things. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we what? We are healed. Amen? You are, you were, and you is. End of story. Here's what the New Living Translation says about verse 5. He was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. Wow. He was whipped so we could be healed. Oh, my goodness. The Amplified, verse 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our wickedness, our sins, our injustice, our wrongdoing. The punishment required for our well-being fell on him, and by his stripes or wounds we are healed. Go to John chapter 15. John chapter 15 and verse 13. We're answering the question, why did Jesus have to die? You know, when you understand why he had to die, it's a greater celebration when you know he rose from the dead. Amen? You know, you appreciate something more when you know how much they paid for it. You paid that much for it? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Right? I'm telling you, God paid the highest price for you. That's how important you are to him. That's how valuable you are to him. He spared no expense. He held nothing back. He gave the very best and most valuable thing he had to deliver you. That's going to be ingrained. John 15, 13. Greater love has no one than this. Then they lay down one's life for his friends. Jesus displayed the greater love. He demonstrated the greater love. They didn't take his life. He laid it down. He was not guilty of any sin. He was sinless. From the time he was born to the time he was 33 and a half years old, he never said run, wa- r- one wrong word. He never broke one of God's commands. He never had a bad attitude. He never said a bad word. He never dis- dishonored his parents. He kept every command of God. He was righteous, holy, pure, sinless, spotless. That's what gave him the power to take away sin. He had no sin in him. There was no attachment of sin in him whatsoever. That's why he could dive into sin and rescue us out of it. You know it's hard to rescue someone from a fire when you got smoke inhalation too? When you're laying on the floor coughing because you can't breathe, it's hard to rescue someone else in the fire. You need to, have, you need to be protected from the smoke, amen? You need to have the, the oxygen on, the face mask on, so that you can go in there, so that when you go into the fire, the smoke is not affecting you. That's what Jesus did. His sinlessness was his, his astronaut suit. That he could go into the atmosphere of sin and deliver sinners out of it. Glory to God. Go to Romans chapter 4. We're giving you some reasons why Jesus had to die. So that when we get to the celebrate, ooh, it's going to be a celebration next week. We're going to have a celebration. I, I can't sing cool in the gang. It's a good time. All right. we're, we're going to have a celebration. 
Sorry, my, my soul is a little bit uh, inactive today. <laughs> Come on, are you, are you getting ready for a celeb- This is the, on the road to the celebration next week. We're going to celebrate next week. Celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because what he gets, we get. We're joint heirs. Hallelujah. He was put over so that you can be put over. He conquered death so that you can be more than a conqueror. Romans 4, 23 and 20, verse 23. It was not written for our sakes alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. Ever say also for me. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him, who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, verse 25, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. Why did he have to die? Because we were offensive to God. Because we had a sin nature. Notice I said had. I don't have a sin nature anymore. And if you're born again, you don't have a sin nature. You are not an old sinner saved by grace. No, you're a new creature born in Christ Jesus. Get that old sin mentality out of your head. God just didn't cover up your sin. He took it away. He didn't put a patch on it. He made it brand new creation. Even the high priest, Caiaphas of Jesus' day, said one man had to die for the people. He was prophesying. Someone had to die. You know why? Because we couldn't save ourselves. We were drowning in the sea of sin, and there was nothing we could do about it. No one else could rescue us but Jesus Christ. Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, the Messiah. Go to Romans chapter 5. Why did Jesus have to die? Because a price had to be paid. Romans 5, verse 6. When we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Before Christ, we were ungodly. Oh, but I was a good person. Doesn't matter. You could smell like a lilac and you'd still be ungodly. You could be the sweetest person ever, but if you don't know Jesus, you're ungodly. See, that's the deception. People think they're never good enough. You can't be good enough. You can only receive what Jesus did by faith in him and in him alone. Don't mix your faith with anything else that's anything that's not word. You want the highest octane that you need to have. Amen. You got to get the pure word. God gave it to you in a book. He put it on your heart. My goodness, what does that else does he have to do? Show me more, Lord. I've shown you everything I've got. So he died for the ungodly. Verse 7, for scarcely a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were in a state that we couldn't help ourselves, he made a move that changed our whole atmosphere and situation. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Because he knew that that was the only way that we're going to change from being a sinner. Amen? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Hallelujah. We're on the pathway to the resurrection. And we're stopping by way of the death museum. And we're just taking a brief tour. We're not going to stay there. Amen? We're just visiting it. We're just gaining some information and some understanding of what Jesus had to do to get us to where we are now. 
1 Corinthians 15, 3, For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. He died for what? Our sins. Every time we disobeyed God, every time we didn't do His will, every time we fall, fell short of His glory, He died for that. And that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Aren't you glad that God is a word doer according to the scriptures? He did not venture from his word. God is a man of his word. He is not a man that he should lie. He never changes and he doesn't have to lie because he's the truth. You can rely on his word. Why? He abides himself by his word. He did everything according to the scriptures. Jesus fulfilled everything that was written about him. Where he was born, who he was, how he was born. Amen? I mean, Jesus fulfilled 300 prophecies about his birth. And that's like a one in gazillion chance of that happening. Go to Colossians chapter 1. Why did Jesus have to die? Colossians chapter 1, verse 21. You who were once alienated. What's an alienated? You, we were alienated from the life of God. An alien is not a resident. An alien is someone from the outside trying to come in. What alienated us from God? Sin. Once you were, you were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now, oh my goodness, now, has he reconciled? He cleared up the books, right? He wiped away the mistakes. All the mistakes are gone. Glory to God. He reconciled us. Now. Hallelujah. He re and now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death. To present you holy, blameless, and above reproach in his sight. Why did Jesus die? So you could be holy, blameless, and above reproach. That means the accusations of the enemy that he's been throwing at you, they don't stick to you. They fall to the floor. Amen. You are free from the accuser of the brethren. Glory to God. Verse 23. If indeed you continue in the faith, Oh, if you've believed in what Jesus has done, you've got to continue in what Jesus has done. You've got to live the life. Right? Christianity is a way of living. It's not just something we do part of the week. It's how we live every day. It's how we interact with people. We are representative of Christ in everything, how we work. We represent Christ. How we handle problems, we represent Christ. Yes, life has problems, but we have the answer. You know, problems aren't so bad when you got the answer. Amen? Tests aren't so bad when it's an open book test. Amen? Oh, I'm, I'm having a test. Let me find the answer. Oh, yeah, found it. Okay, pass that test. Woo! And you're not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard. Listen, the message that you're hearing, you can't move away from it. You've got to carry it out. You've got to keep it close. Right? The best place to keep this message is in your heart. Okay? Which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians one of my favorite words to say, Thessalonians. I love how it just rolls off my tongue. 
First Thessalonians chapter 5. And look at verse 9. God did not appoint you us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. That whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Why did he have to die? So that we could obtain salvation. So that we could be rescued from sin. Aren't you glad that salvation is obtainable? It's God's free gift to every person on the planet. We're saved by grace through faith, not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. Say salvation is a gift. Amen? All right? Why did Jesus have to die? Because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. What's a wage? A wage is something that you earn. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life. The gift overcomes the wage. The gift is greater than the wage. Amen? The best way to make up for a loss is to have something greater in its place. Right? When you've lost something, but you receive something greater... You forget about the loss, don't you? Because you celebrate the greatness of what you have. See, I have something greater. So, when Adam sinned, he died. What did they do? They hid from God. Just the other day, they were walking with God. Now they're hiding from God. What was the difference? Sin. What did sin do? It made them afraid. What did sin do? It removed the glory of God. They, they, sin opened the door. They became sense ruled instead of God ruled. Sin messed them up. Sin kicked them out of their home. Sin brought death into the world. Romans 5, 12. Through one man, sin entered the world and death through sin. The reason why, why do we have all these bad things? Because of sin, S-I-N. Amen? Sin is the problem. But Jesus is the answer. Hallelujah. And ever since Adam fell, man was doing one thing. They were sacrificing animals. Who, was, who did the first animal sacrifice? It was God. Right? When, they, when Adam sinned, what did they do? Oh, we're naked now. Well, they were naked before. They were just covered by the glory of God. Amen? And now they tried to sow fig leaves. And God said, no, no, no. You, you're not going to be able to sow your way out of this. S-E-W. Right? He said, no, I'm going to make you some garments. He made garments of what? Animal skin. First sacrifice that God made for sin was an animal. He covered their nakedness with the blood. And then Abel, when he gave an offering to God, he gave Fluffy the sheep. He was his number one prize winner at the fair. Right? He gave the best that he had. What was the first thing Noah did when he got off the ark? He sacrificed the clean animals. Right? What was, the, what was the thing that Adam, Abraham did? He sacrificed. What was his greatest sacrifice? Isaac. Isaac was the seed that God needed to send his son. You know, if, if you want to do something, if you want God to do something great, give him a seed. Say, give me your seed and watch what I can do with your seed. Isn't that what he said to Abraham? Give me your Isaac. Okay. Why? Abraham knew that whatever happened to Isaac, he'd have been resurrected anyway. You know, when you know that there's a resurrection, you can go through, you can face death fearlessly. Come on. Right? Abraham told the servants, me and the boy, we're going to go worship and me and the boy are coming back. Right? That's faith. He knew exactly, he didn't know how it was going to happen, but he knew that, he knew the outcome was. He knew that no matter what God asked, Isaac was going to be okay. 
And he had faith in God for that. And by the way, the same place that Isaac was offered was the same place that Solomon built the temple was the same place that Jesus was offered. Same mountain. That's pretty amazing. So, God told man that a sacrifice was going to have to be made in order to deal with sin. They, he instituted a, a, a worship where they had to sacrifice on the Day of Atonement once a year. A bull had to be sacrificed. They had so many offerings. This lamb, this goat, this bird, this ephah flower. I mean, there are offerings upon sin offering, peace offering, a free will offering, all kinds of offerings. And every offering was a sacrifice because it was an animal. All right? But that was just a picture of how God was going to deal with sin because he was going to send the ultimate sacrifice. All right, go to John chapter 1. The Gospel of John chapter 1. See, when you know why Jesus died, you get to let loose in the resurrection. How many, need, how many want to let loose next week? Oh, my goodness. There's no party like a Holy Ghost party. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost knows how to party. Anybody that's going to plan thousands of years the greatest party ever, you know he's a partier. Right? I mean, my goodness, Jesus supplied party supplies in John. Right? They, they, didn't have, they ran out of wine. So what did his mother do? Hey, Jesus, they ran out of wine. What's it got to do with me? It's not my time. Whatever he says, do it. Thank God for mamas of faith. Amen? John chapter 1, verse 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which what? Takes away the sins of the world. He was declaring that Jesus was going to be the sacrifice to end all sacrifices. He is the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. Do you think God was surprised by man's sin? When Adam sinned, God didn't have a board meeting and say, Michael, Gabriel, what's going on? No. He wasn't taken by surprise. He knew exactly what he was going to do. He told, he said, the seed of the woman you're going to bruise his heel, but he's going to crush your head. Thank God Jesus crushed the head of the serpent. What does that mean? He destroyed his authority. He stripped him of his anointing. He made a show of him openly. Amen? Before all the spirit realm, Jesus whooped the devils. You know what? Hallelujah. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're answering the question... Why did Jesus have to die? It had to be this way. It could be no other way. This was the way that God ordained. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And whenever you're doing, this is just a, a point that you need to remember. Whenever you do Bible study, don't eat peanut butter and jelly. Or don't eat honey and crackers. Because if you get some honey or jelly on your fingers, your pages are going to stick together. I won't charge you anything extra for that. That's just free. <laughs> Come on, you got to have some fun. Amen? Look at verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus, who knew no sin, what did he do? He became sin for us so that we could become righteous. What a, a divine exchange. We're having an exchange today. 
I'm going to take your sorrows and your pain and give you uh, joy and healing. Amen. I'm going to take your, your uh, darkness and give you light. I'm going to take your confinement and give you freedom. I'm going to take your weakness and give you strength. I'm going to take your depression and put you over the top. And it all came about because Jesus died on the cross. He gave up the ghost. He allowed himself as a lamb before the, uh, the I want to say shredders, but shearers, that's it. That's the name. I knew shredder wasn't right because... A shredder is a bad haircut. <laughs> the shearers. <laughs> Thank you for that. A lamb doesn't argue with the shearers. Jesus was silent about his way of death. He didn't object to it. He went through it. Because he knew that he already had death beat before he met it. He already knew that the enemy of death, you know, death is the last enemy that's going to be put under his feet. And when he comes again, dying no more. That's why we're going to hang out with him in the millennial for a thousand years while he reigns on earth and the lion's going to lay down with the lamb and we're going to play with snakes and not get bit, amen. Hallelujah, just like it was in the ark. He, was, he became sin. Jesus is the complete and total substitute for us. Amen? He became sin so that we could become righteous. He perfect, God's perfect son fulfilled the perfect requirement of God's perfect law. He did it absolutely flawlessly, perfectly, completely. Nothing was missing. Nothing was broken. He dotted every I. He crossed every T. He fulfilled the law and all the requirements <clears throat> of God. Can you say amen? We couldn't meet that standard, but he could. And that's why he did what he did. He was glad to do it because he knew that in doing what he did, it gave you an opportunity to come to his father. It gave you an opportunity to be made right, to be made holy. Amen? What a transformation to go from sin to holy in one moment, one decision, accepting Jesus Christ as Lord. That sin nature is entirely wiped away in that moment. Greatest decision you'll ever make is to accept Jesus. The second greatest decision is to live for Jesus. And to follow him with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. Why would someone take such a great investment that was invested into you and throw it away by not doing it for a lifetime? I mean, when you find a great investment... You want to stick with it. Why? It pays dividends. You know, if you have money invested, thank God for dividends. Right? You let companies borrow your money and they pay you dividends. Amen? God's got the greatest dividends. His, he daily loads us with benefits. We, we could not have gotten the benefits if he hadn't done what he did. But thank God he did. Jeez, go to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. Listen to this. Starting with verse 11. But Christ came as the high priest of good things to come. Did you know that he's the high priest of good things to come? That means God's got some more good things on your way. Do you realize that the Holy Spirit that we have now is only a down payment of what we're going to get? 
Can you say amen? He is the high priest of good things to come. He's the gift that keeps on giving. Hallelujah. Boy, I'm having a good time today. With the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is not of this creation. Verse 12. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood. He entered the most holy place. How? Once and for all. Thank God, because of what Jesus did, I don't have to kill a cow or a goat or a sheep unless I want a hamburger or some lamb chops. I don't have to kill an animal to cover my sin, but I can certainly enjoy their meat. Amen? He freed us from all that stuff once and for all. It doesn't matter what you look like or where you're from or what language you speak or what culture you have. Jesus is for you. He speaks all languages. Amen. He represents all cultures. Every kingdom, every tribe, every tongue, every nation can benefit from the gift that God gave us in Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection. Hallelujah. That's some good preaching right there. I'll amen myself, amen. amen. Having obtained eternal redemption. Oh my goodness. You're, <laughs> you, you have been eternally redeemed. Forever and ever and ever. Amen. amen. Just don't go out the same door that you came in. You know, Jesus is the door, and people can walk out the same door that they came in. Once saved, always saved. No. If that were true, the devil would have never got kicked out of heaven. If that were true, Saul would have never lost his anointing, King Saul. There's no such thing as once saved, always saved. Oh, I know Jesus. No, you got to live it. You got to do it. You got to say it, live it, do it. Say it, live it every day. All right, let's read on. Verse 13. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more? Who? How much more? Shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, Cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Jesus died so that he could cleanse your conscience. That church is brainwashed. Yeah, my brain was so dirty it needed a good cleansing. Amen? Why do you think we have to renew our minds? Because we got stinking thinking to deal with. This earthly natural mind... When you're tied to the earthly natural world, it thinks bad things. Now, you cannot help thoughts coming to you, right? Thoughts are like birds. You can't stop a bird from flying over your head. But if that bird wants to make a nest out of your hair, you can say, oh, I don't think so. You're not nesting out of my hair. What, what's, what does that mean? You've got to be careful what thoughts lodge in your mind. Thoughts are going to come and go, but what thoughts are you dwelling on? I know what thoughts you're dwelling on by how you act and how you speak. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's in your heart will come out of your mouth. If you've got a negative heart, you're going to speak negative words. That's why the Bible says, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? For this reason, he is the mediator of a new covenant. There's one mediator between God and man, the man. Christ, Jesus. say Jesus is the man. You know, and he's 100% man, but he's also 100% God. 
He's the perfect combination, which makes him the perfect representative and the perfect mediator. That those who are called may receive the promise of in- eternal inheritance. All right? Go to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Can you say praise the Lord? It's good to know this thing, isn't it? To understand why Jesus died. If he didn't die, we could never be healed. If he didn't die, we'd have been stuck in sin with no hope. Basically, if he didn't die, we'd have been dead. Right? If he didn't do what he did, we could never be free. But he did what he did. It's a fact. And we can put our trust in it. And we can reap the benefits of it. Amen? Hebrews 2, verse 9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels... For the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor. I want you to notice, suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor. Do you realize he, only, he experienced death for the shortest amount of time ever? He just had a little taste of death. He says, ooh, I, I don't like it. I'm not going to have it anymore. Right? Remember when he appeared in Revelation? I am he who was and is and is to come. I was dead, but now I'm alive. I like life better. Life tastes better. Amen. I tasted death. It was sour. It was bitter. That's why I only had it for a short time. See, he, he didn't need to buy a tomb because he was only renting it. A couple hours. Right? 48. 48 plus hours. That was it. He tasted, but his death was so powerful. So suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God might taste death for everyone. Jesus said, you don't have to taste death. I tasted it for you. Tell me it it tastes terrible. That's why as a believer, death has no sting. Oh yes, people who lose a loved one, they sorrow, but the person who died in Christ has no sting, has no sorrow of death, they have no pain of death, amen. When they died, they left their body and they're in heaven with Jesus forever, hallelujah. Glory to God. For Christian, we're victorious over death. Jesus offered himself for all. Jesus suffered once for sins, for the the just, for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Because Jesus died, we can be brought to the Father. And whenever the devil tries to prosecute you, your lawyer, Jesus, presents the only evidence that he needs. I want to enter into evidence, exhibit one, my blood that was shed on Calvary. And the father says, I accept this evidence, case closed. He throws the devil out of the court, amen. The devil loses every time. He puts his, uh, he tries to prosecute a believer, tries to prosecute a child of God, amen. He can't win a case. And he's never going to win a case. The devil is the ultimate loser. Christ is the ultimate winner. Hallelujah. He won through death. Death tried to hold on to him, but it couldn't. Death had no lasting grip on Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Go to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Hallelujah. If if this don't get you excited about Jesus, your wood is wet. That's why there's no fire, because the wood is wet. Get yourself under the dryer and dry that wood and let it ignite in flame. Amen? Amen. Here at VCF, we leave our wet blankets out in the parking lot. 
They're not allowed in here, amen? There is freedom of expression here. There is freedom to be who you are. Amen. You don't, have to tr- you don't have to come in here and try to be someone else. Right? You just be who you are. Right? If you're trying to be anybody else, you're second best. You are free in this place. Amen? Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. I want you to listen what Paul expressed. I want to be found in him. Not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes, which is from God by faith, that I may know him. How many want to know him today? You want to know him more and more. Amen. You want to continually grow in the knowledge of God. You want to know more things about God today than you did last week. Amen. Right? I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. How many want the power of his resurrection? But to get the power of the resurrection, notice this, and the fellowship of his sufferings. What should a Christian suffer? You will suffer persecution. You will suffer criticism. You shouldn't suffer sickness. But what if I'm sick? Then get healed. Amen? Amen? Come to Jesus. He'll heal you. Healing is God's will. Did did anyone in the Gospels ever come to Jesus and say, uh, can you come back tomorrow? I can't get you in today. I mean, think about this. Jesus didn't have, he, he couldn't eat a meal without being interrupted. He couldn't get a nap on a boat without being interrupted. Right? Everywhere he went, people would flock to where he was. He could be out in the wilderness. Hey, these people have been following me for three days. They're hungry. You need to feed them. They were in a barren place. But multitudes and multitudes of people everywhere he went. I mean, my goodness, the only time he could pray was when everybody else was sleeping. Think about it. Everywhere he went, there were people here, people there, people everywhere, right? He never stopped ministering. He never turned anyone away that came to him. He, he dealt with every problem that came to him. Amen? Demons would freak out. Ah, it's Jesus. Shut up. Okay. Right? The demons were in church. They were in the synagogue. Jesus is there. And the people said, oh, he's got authority over demons. Well, it's because the Pharisees and Sadducees never exercised any authority because they didn't have any. Religion has no authority. But a relationship with Jesus gives you authority. So you've got to be found in him. You've got to know the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death. How do we conform to his death? We die daily by denying the flesh. That's how we conform to him, his death. We resist things that our flesh wants so that we give what our spirit wants. Amen? That's how we're conformed to his death. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. All right? So, one final note is Jesus' death through his loss we gained. Right? We gained an incredible opportunity and a blessing. And there's one final thing that Jesus did. He paid a ransom. He said, I've come to give my life as a ransom for many. See, what happened was Satan kidnapped us through sin. And the original sin made us slaves to sin. And we were bound by it. Do you know that when you sin, you become a slave to sin? Because sin doesn't just occur once, it wants to become a habit. 
If the devil can cause you to sin once, he can cause you to sin again. And he doesn't cause you, actually. He just tempts you. He just presents the opportunity. He has no power to make you do it. Right? Because there are examples in the Bible of people that were tempted with sin in the moment. They said no. Look at your neighbor and say, tell sin no. And tell sin to go. Right? And we ought to keep each other accountable. When you see someone sin or hear someone sin, say, hey, look, you should strive to please God. Right? And Jesus paid our ransom. Hallelujah. After Adam sinned, immorality increased. Murder occurred, evil was rampant, wickedness spread like a plague. I mean, when it got to Noah, the world was so wicked that God wanted to destroy it. That's how fast it went. It was like wildfire. But Jesus, go to Hosea chapter 13. The prophet who was married to a prostitute. Because God told him to. Because his relationship with his wife reflected the relationship of Israel and God. God, God, did, God had the prophets do some funny things. Jeremiah, he had to lay on his one side and prophesy for several days. One of the prophets was naked. I mean, God has some people to do some different things. Right? But Hosea 13, 14. You know what? Hosea's wife, I forget her name, but she kept leaving him. Gomer, that's it. Yeah, Gomer. You know, not Gomer Pyle, like, golly! Right? But Gomer, because she was always gone. She should have been called Goner because she would always leave. And then we'd come back, right? But that was, that's what Israel did. They'd be all happy with God. And they'd get, then they'd leave God. They'd sin. Enemy would come in. And then God would rescue them. Then it would happen all over again. It was a vicious cycle. But notice what it says in Hosea 13, verse 14. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. Oh, my goodness. I will redeem them from death. Oh, death, I will be your plagues. Oh, grave, I will be your destruction. Pity is hidden from my eyes. Oh, my goodness. Jesus waged war on death and the grave through his conquering over his death. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he won the victory. Amen. He lived to tell about it. He even got the t-shirt. What was Jesus' t-shirt? Risen from the dead. Right? So he gave himself a ransom. What does that mean? He delivered you from your captor. He paid the price and the enemy could not Help but to loose his control over you, his grip on you. He had to open the prison cell. He had to set you free. He couldn't hold you anymore. He couldn't confine you anymore. He had to open it, amen? Because the ransom was paid in full. Glory to God. He set you free. Hallelujah. Your healing was paid. Your deliverance was paid. Your salvation was paid. Your family peace was paid. Hallelujah. You can live a sin-free life. Glory to God. Because your bill was paid. Hallelujah. You can enjoy what's been on the, on the buffet because your bill has been paid in full. Hallelujah. What Jesus did when he died he paid our debt amen completely and totally amen and now you just get to enjoy the benefits glory to God I'm glad I got that out praise God he ransomed us we are the ransomed of God hallelujah we are free indeed glory to God he made me free I'm not going to apologize for my freedom or for my excitement about Jesus or my expression of how much I love him. He made me free. And I'm going to shout it out. I'm going to walk it out. I'm going to talk it out. I'm going to live it out. I'm going to demonstrate it. And I'm going to share that love with people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We need to praise God in this place for the death of Jesus Christ. And the, what he paid, 
what, what we got as a result of it. Amen. The greatest action that he could ever do was to give his life. And he gave his life on the cross. Amen. He became sin. And so that he took away our sin, we can become righteous. We are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We now can walk in to the throne of heaven, to the most holy place. We can walk in and say, hey, God, what's happening? Hey, Daddy, how you doing, man? I just want to come and hang out with you. I just want to come and fellowship with you. And God will say, come on in, son. Come on in, daughter. It's been A way has been made for you through the blood of my son. Hey, man, through the, the Lamb of God. God that was slain glory to God his blood was shed his blood broke every curse that came on the earth amen hallelujah he set us free the curse caused us shall not come anybody that tries to curse you now will be cursed themselves anybody that blesses you now will be blessed themselves hallelujah glory to God I feel like an evangelist Woo! glory to God he set us free why did Jesus have to die? Because he loves you so much. He wanted you to have the best of the best. That's why he died. His death gave us access to all of God's goodness. Remember when he died on the cross? The veil was rent in two. Not side to side, top to bottom. It was a thick veil. That sucker was weatherproof. Right? And he rent that veil. What did that mean? That anyone who believed in him, everyone now became a high priest and a king. You became a priest and a king. And that was an open invitation. Say, God was saying, come on in. Come on in. We're going to have a family reunion. Come on in. We're going to have a celebration. Come on in. Sit at my feet. Come on into my presence. Come on in. Come on in. Hallelujah. That's what he was saying. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. How many are excited? How many are glad for what Jesus did? We ought to get to our feet and we ought to give God some praise in this place. Our praise ought to shake the very foundation of this building in the name of Jesus. We ought to give God glory. We ought to get excited. Hey Amen. We got 10 seconds to get excited in the presence of God. Glory to God. Today is a day to cut loose. If, we, if you ever wanted to cut loose in your praise, now is the moment. Today is the day. Hey Amen. It's time to cut loose. Hallelujah. It's time to express your freedom to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I mean, don't people who get excited, don't they shout? I've seen people shout at the TV when their team wins. I've seen people shout when good things happen. I've, why don't we shout for Jesus, amen? Come on, shout a little bit. Shout a little bit. We got to get our shout on. you got hallelujah yeah he said it we believe it do you believe it hallelujah we're in a room full of believers believers are receivers now some of you may have come in with some stuff today. Maybe it's a sickness. Maybe it's an oppression. Maybe you just want to get closer to God. I don't know what it is, but the Holy Ghost knows what it is. And if you'd like special prayer, I want you to come up right now in this moment in the name of Jesus. There's a chain breaking, prison opening, Binder freeing, anointing here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, release your anointing and your power on her right now. Pour it on her, Lord, by the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost is being released and is doing what you need done. In the name of Jesus, fill her up, Lord. Touch the parts that need to be touched right now. Oh, we release your power from on high. In the name of Jesus. Fresh anointing, fresh anointing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. brought her here today. You delivered her me- your message to her, Lord, and I thank you that you're backing up your message with power right now in the name of Jesus. Recreative power, healing power, delivering power. Father, in the name of Jesus, ordering power, Lord, I thank you that she's of a sound mind. She does not have a spirit of fear, but she has a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Lord, import impart your power to your daughter right now and deliver her and heal her and pick her up Lord in the name of Jesus give her the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you Lord touch her Father stretch forth your hand and touch her in her body in the name of Jesus fill her heart and mouth with good things right now in the name of Jesus thank you Lord for your anointing upon her in Jesus name set her free and touch her Lord Fill it with the Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh, I give you thanks and praise. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. God is filling you right now with goodness, mercy, and grace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for touching her right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God is fun, isn't it? Oh, Autumn, he loves you so much. Father, I just thank you right now, Lord, that you're anointing her head with oil and her cup is running over now, Father, with your power and your glory. Just touch her, Lord, right now. Fill her heart's desire. Meet her need right now. In the name of Jesus, we release the anointing and the power of your Holy Spirit, Father. I thank you, Lord, that she is sealed with your spirit. In the name of Jesus, and your word is working mightily in her, renewing her, strengthening her, equipping her. She, you're an overcomer. You're bold as a lion. There's a lioness on the inside of you. In the name of Jesus, and I give you thanks and praise that God is bringing it out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your power. Just touch her right now and fill her till she overflows. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you thanks and praise, Father, for your goodness and your grace. In the name of Jesus. Lord, just as you came upon Jesus like a gentle dove, I thank you, Lord, that you're coming upon Cookie right now. In the name of Jesus, you're touching your heart, Lord. You're filling her in the name of Jesus. You're strengthening her with might in her inner man by the Holy Ghost. Oh, I thank you, Lord. She's tasted and she has seen that you are good. And she blesses you, Lord. And I think that you're blessing her with power of your presence and the glory of your name in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Restlessness. I speak peace to restlessness in the name of Jesus. The peace that passes understanding. You are able and qualified to enter into God's rest. And he gives his beloved sweet, sweet sleep. You're his beloved. And he loves you. Hallelujah. Oh, Heavenly Father. Father, for Eileen, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you brought her from this and from that. You brought her a long way. She's known you to be faithful. She's known you to be true. She's known you to be all powerful. You're the mighty Jesus. You're her Savior, her healer. Touch her body, Father. Strengthen her body from head to toe. Lord, cause the cry of her heart to be met. Lord, I call her blessed. 
what God has blessed, no man can curse in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that she has a touch from the Master's hand right now. And Lord, you impart your power into her. You infuse her with supernatural and divine strength in the name of Jesus. You renew her mind, Lord. And I thank you that she is victorious. She is triumphant in the name of Jesus. And you satisfy her mouth with good things. And the joy of the Lord is active and alive in her in the name of Jesus. I thank you for filling every gap in Stephen's life right now. Flood his soul with lights. The lights of Jesus is the life of men. Lord, I thank you that you are igniting a flame and a passion and a fire within him that will take him higher. It will take him further. It will cause him to go deeper into you. In the name of Jesus, oh, I thank you, Lord. That fruit is being produced in his life. And his leaf shall not wither. And whatever he does, Father, whatever he does shall prosper, increase abundantly in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, let your goodness and mercy flow over him right now in Jesus' name. I give you thanks and praise for your glory and your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for touching in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, Lord, you are constantly doing good things for me. So many times the enemy has tried to take you out unsuccessfully. He's tried to come against you only to be put down and squashed. Because God's given you authority and power to tread on serpents and scorpions. God wants you to know He loves your boldness. You've been bold in many things. Now the Lord is saying, be bold in me. Be bold about your stance. In my liberty. Oh, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and the Spirit of God dwells in you dwells in you and there's liberty and freedom you're free from oppression oh you're free from limits oh the devil cannot confine you he tries unsuccessfully but God has given you the keys to his kingdom he's given you insights knowledge and wisdom to walk in his ways oh father in the name of Jesus I thank you that goodness and mercy follow me all the days of his life in the name of him. And he will dwell in your house forever and ever. And he'll experience the goodness of God and the glory, the glory, the glory, the glory, the glory, the glory. glory. Holy smoke. Holy smoke is no joke. The glory. Oh, the the glory, the glory, the glory, the glory. The glory. Hallelujah. Are you thankful for who Jesus is? Are you grateful for what he's done? I'm so glad he didn't do a partial job. But for the joy that was sent before him, He endured the cross, despising the suffering and the shame. He took your sickness, he took your pain, and he made you gain. Hallelujah. You have more with him than you do without him. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. He said, I've primed the pump for your celebration. As you rejoice and have a good time, enjoy my salvation. 
enjoy your freedom that I have made you free because I love you children and I've given you liberty hallelujah amen amen oh hallelujah thank you father for sealing your word today with your holy spirit may we never ever forget what you did for us may we always cherish it in our hearts and live it in our lives we love you and praise you father thank you for your goodness and your presence in jesus name amen have a great rest of the week if you can come on wednesday come on wednesday